Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 26 of Direwolf20's server play series. Somebody left a nuke in my base. I want to say that was Thunderdark. Is that correct, Thunderdark? You know Thunderdark doesn't like to talk on camera. He says no. I think it was him. I suspect it was him. Um, okay. That's nice of you. Looks like uh, the nuclear uh, bomb, though, now has a little bit of an interface going on. There's eight slots on the outside and one slot on the inside. Thunderdark, do you want to tell me what that's all about? Meanwhile, I have some MFSU stuff to attend to. Because my MFSU... Oh, good. Somebody filled up a full Lapatron crystal. That'll hold me over. Because my nuclear fuel just ran out, it looks like. So let me get this thing processing. Okay, I've got one. I'm going to need six more. We'll let that cook for a few minutes. It shouldn't be too long. And meanwhile, Soren, I know, was playing with the glasses a little bit. So I'm going to hook these guys up and see what this has to say. Okay, waiting on Soren HUD. Not seeing anything. Maybe he's not done with it. MFSU's working, though, so that's cool. Okay, I'm going to get the nuclear reactor refilled. Um, still can't automate it just yet. I think these guys are still working on it. But meanwhile, I want to show you some cool stuff with open peripherals. Remember I told you last episode about open peripherals? You can kind of hook it up to an inventory, and uh, or pretty much almost any block, and have it interact with it in some way or another. For example, I've got a computer hooked up out here to this lava little thingy, right? And um, I can actually wrap the peripheral on the left. And if you do p.list methods, you can see everything you can do with it. So, for example, I can get the colors on this thing. And then I can list them all like this. So we can see here that there's, you know, one color is 14 and two colors are four. So I guess there's some kind of mapping to which colors are which, but it's pretty neat, right? Uh, you can also do um, p.get tank info. So let's do this. I think I want to do that. Ah, okay. Needs a direction. Uh, that's north. A lot of the things in this mod, by the way, use, you know, directions like north instead of left or whatever. And then I should be able to see that it's string and table. All right, let's do this. I'll give you guys more details maybe on a separate video how this works. But you can see here that it can detect that it's lava, how much is in it, how much the capacity is, that kind of thing. Pretty cool. I like it. So lots of cool stuff you can do with computers. Now, another thing you can do with this is the following. Like I'm gonna bring it down here into this area and show you another nifty trick. Did I leave this program on here? No, let me rewrite it. So for example, you can read individual slots in a chest and see what's in there. So we can see that in slot one, we have tile.stone. There's 45 of them, a max slot size of 64. The name is just stone and the ID is one. So that's like the item ID, right? So if we just put string in slot one, we can see the same thing. It's item.string. It's, you know, easy to read name. It's just string, max stack size of 64, but currently the quantity is three and the item ID is 287, which if we open up any eye here, we'll see 287 is in fact the item ID. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with computers uh, using open peripherals you can connect all kinds of different inventories and it's with that that I built between last episode and this because it was a lot of coding and a lot of programming which I know you guys don't like to see too much of on camera I finally cleaned up the Nexus book room ta-da pretty cool right so I can go visit Dyer's place just pop through the portal and here we go nice so how does this nifty little gadget work? Well, I'm not going to go too much into the code, but maybe I'll show you guys in a separate video. Uh, but basically, long story short, we've got back here a turtle. And underneath the turtle is a chest 
full of linking books. Now the cool thing about this is because open peripherals can read the information of different items and in different inventory slots, I'm actually reading the name that's on the book and putting it in here. So you might have remembered in um, you know Forgecraft uh, 1 last season, I built a very similar contraption where I had you know a couple different turtles all storing the books in their inventory slots and you could name the books by typing it into the computer. Well you don't have to do that anymore. Check this out. Okay, all I got to do is, uh, let's for example, show you that I can remove book, Dyer's Place. Okay, so that's going to pull the book out and it's going to get pumped out of the pipe here. Okay, so basically what it does is it pulls the book that's associated with Dyer's Place out of the chest, puts it into the turtle, and then the turtle activates a redstone signal to activate the gate to pull the item out and put it into this chest. Cool? So there's Dyer's Place. And we can see Dyer's Place was removed from the screen. It's no longer on the screen here. Cool, right? Now if I put a book into the chest right here and give it a few seconds, it's just going to pipe its way directly into the chest. And then if we watch the screen, it refreshes and it automatically knows the name of that book is called Dyer's Place. Cool. The reason that's working is because the turtle can read the inventory slots inside the chest and was able to read the name of the book. So no longer do you have to manually name your books. You just, you know, name them in the writing desk or on the table there like that, and then go ahead and just drop them into the chest. And uh, if you if you don't use these chests, if you put them in manually, you can also just do rescan turtles. So for example, I'll take out um, the book here that says Craftsol. Okay, refresh, and see the crafts thing is gone. So real quick and easy way to read the inventory and basically refresh again and crafts is back. Cool. How do you like it, Mikey? Not sure if he's on TeamSpeak. So because Mikey added, remember I told you last episode he was going to add something so you could read the um, details on the book? Yeah, that's what he hooked up for me and that's what we've got going on. So it's pretty slick. I'm really excited about how easy it is. So all anybody has to do is go ahead and put a book in here. Now, the other thing I didn't like is how small the buttons were. Um, you really couldn't have a lot of information written on the button. So I go, I went ahead and added just a page turning system. So you can see we've got page one of two on here, and I can just click next page, and I'll jump over to the second page where there's some other cool stuff. And uh, previous page here um, to switch back to the first page. And it'll continually expand, so as we add more and more books to this chest, it should automatically add more and more pages, which is pretty neat. So I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe I'll do a separate video. Go ahead and leave some comments if you guys want to see a separate video where I dive more into the code on how that works. It's really not too complicated, but, you know, it's probably worth checking out. Yeah, maybe I'll do that for you. All right, um, I don't want to paste in the code just yet because the version of open peripherals that you need isn't really User working just yet. Um, so it's not public. So we'll, uh, you know, check it out in a bit. All right, guys, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and I find myself in the nether. What am I doing here? Well, actually, I want to get myself some nether brick. So I'm running up towards this nether brick platform here. You can see we've already been doing a bit of farming of the nether brick. Let's just go find a nice spot. You know, ooh, look at this bad stuff over here. Bad right, guys. Better make sure I'm eating. Maybe even have a spell on me or two. Nice, got him. Got you a two. <laughs> I'm loving Ars Magica. It's so nice. All right, what am I doing? I'm cleaning out a bunch of nether brick. So I'll be back in a minute. Let me just get a bunch of this stuff. I want to get a little bit more than I need because I already have as much as I need, but I want some more just to have for later. Okay, the reason I needed the nether brick, and actually I'm going to pop back to my house for a minute because I need to get one more item. Um, there's a couple different ways we can make this, but I'm going to get some chimerite, which I have a decent amount of, and get a few of these blocks. Cool. According to my arcane compendium, there's one more type of nexus that we haven't had a chance to play with. Um, that is this guy. Okay. He's the, uh, oh, cool. Dark nexus. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. The Dark Nexus is the third type of power. We've got already the Light and the Normal Nexus uh, energy. So we, we want to go ahead and get ourselves some Dark Nexus energy. I haven't gone ahead and set this up yet. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily needed just yet, but there is a reason I want to get it. And it's basically um, just a little tip that um, Mythian told me. 
because I was starting to say to him, like, you know, I'm really starting to have mana issues here. Is there a better way to get mana? Because right now I can get mana regen one by standing in this, uh, you know, partially charged area. And, you know, it's not a big deal. It gives me mana regen one, but I'd like, you know, mana regen two or three. Well, two can come from standing in this one, but if we build a dark nexus, we can get as high as mana regen three. So that's what I'm going for here. So I believe Chimerite would be a good block to go with, just because I had a decent amount of it. Um, I'm not sure what order this thing goes in, but it says like Chimerite is an option or Obsidian. I imagine Obsidian's the lower tier, and then Sunstone, which seems kind of rare. So I'm thinking Sunstone might be the best one to go with. So I'm going with Chimerite. That's a guess, I might be wrong. And then right in the center, boom, nice. Dark Nexus. Ooh, that's kind of cool. How do we use it? I am glad you asked, my good sir. Let's go find out. I'm going to open up a thing here and go see if I can find some guys. Come here, guy. I want to try this out on you. I'm just going to kind of encourage you. Oh, there we go. Dark Nexus has him. Oh, that is cool. See you later, Dark Nexus. Took care of him. All right, we're going to definitely set this up right here. Let's go after another one of them. Can I get one of them at range? There we go. Nice. So that should quickly and easily fill up this Dark Nexus with some energy. Um, there is a way to read the uh, the energy inside the Nexus now. I just have to go ahead and get that item. So give me a few minutes. I'll be back in a moment. Neptune, you, you check this out. Not bad, right? That's pretty cool. Alright, I will be back in a moment. Neptune, I think your mic's activating but being weird. Cool. Alright, back in a few. All right, guys, we are back, and I've got a little project for myself that's, again, more for the server than directly for me, but it's also going to help me, so I'm cool with it. I need to get myself the following. We've recently added a new mod to the server, in particular, MFFS. So we can see here, we've got all the MFFS stuff again. It recently uh, just got a straight port to 1.6, so I do want to, I have, like, a really cool plan for, like, this awesome base I want to have. It's not going to be purely MFFS, but that's going to play a role. However, there's one problem with MFFS. It requires Monazet Ore. And really the only way to get Monazet Ore is uh, pretty much through UU Matter, which we don't have at the moment, or mining. And the Digger Age that we have here, because Monazet Ore doesn't retro world gen, doesn't have any. And I know like myself and Neptune and a few other people have done a lot of uh, exploring of the Digger Age. So it would be a lot of traveling to get to a spot in Digger where it doesn't exist already. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to generate Digger 2. Why don't I put together the pages and I'll be right back. All right, guys, cross your fingers for Digger 2. I got the cyan sky color I wanted. Nice. Oh, cool. Crystal formations, just like I wanted. Nice. This should be good. Okay, cool. So we've got a Digger 2. Awesome. It looks like a stable age. Can't say for sure, but... Uh-oh, I see some taint. <laughs> that might be a problem. Nice. That's kind of cool, actually. I wonder if it's going to do anything to these cows. So that's interesting to note. Already got a touch of taint. All right, not a big deal. Not the end of the world. All right, let me get my quarry set up here because, like, step one is I need to get some mods in order. So just showing you guys that I'm setting up this terrain and everything and getting the quarry going. I should probably set up the link book home. So let me take care of that, and I'll be back in a minute or two. All right, guys, so the reason I'm showing you set up my quarry is because I've got a slightly different method that I want to go with. So I don't want to set up the quarry right where we enter the age, but I don't want to be too far away either. 
So let's like kind of head up to a nice spot and find a good place to call home. Oh, you know what else I could do? Ooh, this would be a good idea. Actually, let me go get something. I want to show you this. If you guys didn't see my extra utility spotlight, you may not know what block I'm about to get, but you should have watched it because it's a really cool and useful block. I'm going to head back to Dyer's place. There we go. And make myself an angel block. There it is, angel block. That's not too bad, actually. That's an easy crafting recipe. I'm gonna get a few of these. Oh, right, I'm short on feathers, aren't I? <laughs> All right, off to digger and back to digger two. Okay, so angel block. I'll tell you in a sec, RW Tema, if it's working. RW Tema added something recently to uh, one of the components of this mod, and I'm about to test it out for him and tell him if it's working or not. Oh man, there's crazy stuff going on down there. I'm a little bit of afraid to set up my quarry so close to that creepy looking land, but we'll set it up over here. Maybe I'll just screenshot the X, Y, Z coordinates of it so I don't forget where I put them. All right, that should be good, I think. Yeah. Oh, you know what I need? Forgot one little thing. Oh, see, yeah, we're a little close to this taint. Let me find a good spot to set up camp and I'll be right back. All right, I think I found a decent place. I'm going to call it like this area right here. Looks good to me. So yeah, it's way on the top of a hilltop, which is fine. I'm not worried about that. Uh, but let's take a look at this awesome new block that I'm going to show you courtesy of a jetpack. You ready? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that works. Close enough. The angel block, if you didn't see my extra utility spotlight, is awesome in that it can be placed in the air, not attached to another block. So it doesn't have to be hooked up to another block. I didn't have to build a big old tower of blocks all the way up. No big deal. Just place it wherever you want. So this one, it's not a big deal. I don't have to do that to it, but it's nice to have them. Trust me. All right, that looks like a nice setup. So yeah, you can kind of place them wherever you want. Like you don't have to have them already set up on another block. Uh, it looks like that weird bug is going on here too. And you know what else I think? I don't think they actually, I think when you break them, they don't like, they automatically go into your inventory. They don't turn into blocks. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, we're definitely having that bug here in this age too, where even though it's an eternal day age, we're still getting mob spawns. So that is definitely a bug report for my good buddy XCOMP because that's weird. All right, so let's see, this thing ready to go? Quarrying time, yes. Now there's another cool thing I wanna show you from Extra Utilities, which should be nice and helpful. All right, and this should keep the chunks loaded. So I don't think I need a chunk loader because I made it a point to make sure that I was like in a nice spot in this chunk so that it would keep this chunk and all other necessary ones loaded. So we should be good there. Um, so we're gonna want an ender chest. We know this story. And we're gonna want gate, iron and gate, this guy here, this thing here. We're gonna want the red pipe signal stuff ready to go. And we can say space and inventory red pipe signal. Oh boy, these guys are going to be a nuisance. All right, what I want to set up here is my kinesis pipes. And then my wooden pipes. Now I'm not going to have to use quite as many of these because I've got a new toy to show you guys. And then finally, we want this guy with my golden fluid pipes. There we go. Cool. All right, now what I should be able to set up, I need to go get some water. So I will be right back. You know what, do I have a bucket by chance in my ender pouch? I do have a water bucket, awesome, perfect. Never mind. I don't have to be right back. All right, so let's make sure that this is nice and in the right spot. I can probably do this right here. You know what, I think I need to do something like this. And I want to make sure that this is nice and stable. So let me do this and just steal some water. I'll be right back. Now, I honestly haven't tried this yet, but I'm going to put the transfer node. Hmm, that's weird. That's not the way I want it to go. Can I just put this like right here? That's not going to work for me, is it? No, that's probably not going to work. Oh, I bet I know. I bet it has to go something like this. And maybe like this. Okay, that should do. Let's try it. What do you say? I'm thinking this is the way it's going to have to work. 
So apparently liquid transfer nodes, so remember in the past liquid transfer nodes were used just to transfer liquids, right? Well apparently now they can be used to pump liquid out, kind of like an aqueous accumulator. So you just have to have a water source block on two sides of it, and uh, it should start pumping. So let's see, are we getting water in here? Not yet. And RW Tema had to go to bed, so that kind of stinks. You are not working, are you? All right, transfer node liquid, definitely. Let me try something else, let's try this. I don't think it would have to be like that, would it? Oh, there we go, now we're talking, cool. So that's the deal. All right, that's not too bad. I guess it has to sit above it like that, and then you are probably working as well. Cool, look at that. So it should find, I don't know if one will be enough here, but I don't want these things to blow up. So we'll see. But I mean, it's filling the water up pretty quick, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, that's pumping pretty fast. I'm guessing between the two of them, it's gonna find stuff. Oh yeah, look at that, holding lots of water. Cool. I wonder if this holds like an entire tank's worth, maybe 16,000 millibuckets? We'll see. Yep, there we go, they're filled up. All right, so they have an internal buffer. They'll just dump water out. That might be a little bit easier than the pump system I've had to set up. Cool. All right, final setup components are you guys. So here, 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 and here. And then I need my gates. That basically just say, while this redstone signals, or uh, red pipe wire signal is on, do a redstone signal. There we go. Nice. All right, and with that, we should be getting pretty close to having a quarry built. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're back, guys. And what I want to get is something I was just testing in single player, uh, the IO port. Because I realized something else that my system is getting full of. So I'm going to need two disk drives. So let's get some chests. Okay, let's get some wood then. There we go. Then we're probably gonna want a bunch of basics. So let's get like, I don't know, 20 of them. I'll be back when they're done cooking. There we go, MEIO port. And while I'm at it, I'll get some cables. And while I'm at that, I'm gonna wait for, hmm, storage, huh? Storage segment, storage cells, 4K storage. Hmm, so 16K storage requires a storage block. Okay, let me set up these things in here as well, because I think I should add this to this guy. All right, while I'm requesting that this thing craft me three storage blocks, which is what I need for a storage cluster, I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking here. So I've got my MEIO port. This guy I should be able to do something pretty nice with. And oh, I did not want to break that. That was way too easy to break. What was that? My ore washing plant? Darn it. That was super easy to break. Gotta be a little careful with this thing. All right, let's pop this guy down. He should work just fine right where he is. So let me get a new ore washing plant and I'll be right back. Well, that was annoying. Let's not forget to mm -hmm. not forget. stop this, plant this guy here, put in the transformer upgrades again, and then Oh right, I remember how this worked. This actually does need to be here still. Ha! All that wasted effort for nothing. There we go. Back up and running. Cool. So I guess I don't really want to use this thing anymore, so I should probably break it. And into here I'm going to put dirt. So remember, this guy's storage bus frequency is negative 64, so it's like the last place anything's going to wind up. And that's where I'm going to put my ME condenser. So let's get this guy set up here. 
Zero out of zero accumulated energy. How's my storage thing going? We're almost there. Not quite. Are we missing anything? Oh, you know why? Because I've been breaking stuff. There we go. Now we're crafting again. I'll be back in a minute when it's all done. Okay, guys, we're back with the storage cluster ready to go. So why did I snag and make myself that cool thing? Well, let's first off put this in condense into singularity mode. That's why I made the storage cluster. So theoretically, I should be able to put any items I want in here. And or no, wait, we want to put it here, right? And that'll have 63. There we go. So it's accumulating energy. That's a good sign. Let's get our refill bag here. Cool. That should refill me. Perfect. Now, first off, I want to come up here because I happen to know I have a ton of dirt in my AE system, like 13,000, and look, it's continually adding to it. So let's steal this for a second, and um, it's probably going to start refilling. So I should probably steal all these guys. So where are you putting dirt now? Probably in here, maybe? In this one? Where would you be storing dirt at this point? There, that's where it's putting it. It's in the proper place. Cool. Neptune, guess what? What? Well, that was weird. Um, your barrels are funny. Are they? Yeah, when you place them, they're weird. They're like in a weird shape. So I should be able to put Good this guy. Move to output when ready. Always active. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. Transfer data to network. It should be dumping very rapidly, as a matter of fact, all the dirt that it's got into the AE network. There we go. Look, 64 stacks all of a sudden. Perfect. So that's what that block does, the IO node. It transfers items from its inventory into the AE network. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing what's inside this storage unit right now. So what should be happening at this point is any dirt showing up in the network should automatically get dispensed into that block down there. And the same is going for cobblestone, by the way. So cobblestone and dirt are automatically being dumped into here. So if we look, we should be seeing we're accumulating a decent amount of energy. 93, 64. See, all the dirt that's being picked up by my quarry automatically getting turned into singularities. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. All right, cool. So now that that's done, we can see here that we've got a bunch of sand and stone dust and everything, but that's fine. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, see, stuff's happening now. So I'm going to let this thing go back into uh, working mode. There we go. Now we've got storage in the network again, but all dirt should pretty much prioritize getting dumped into that system. 7613. All right, I just want to see if there's any cobblestone laying around in any of these guys. So this is the reason I have this chest here. See, yeah, cobblestone. So let's grab him. I'm going to dump all the cobblestone out. Because basically what's going to happen is the cobblestone will have somewhere to go. See, look, it's going somewhere. It's probably going into here. So yeah, tons of the stuff accumulate energy-wise. Nice. So that'll ensure that we're not storing cobblestone anywhere else either. Now we're talking. Cool. It doesn't really matter which one of these I put in here. In fact, I could probably just put everything in here. And this one can stay there. Cool. Why are you saying there's so many bytes used when you're not showing anything? That's Oh, there we go. That was a weird thing. But now we're cruising. So how are we for... So we've got tons of gravel. We've got 4096 cobble. We've got a decent amount of dirt extra, but that's probably this dirt. So if I pulled this all out with that... Close. There must be dirt somewhere else around here. Probably in one of these guys. Maybe. I'll find it. But if I put you in there, yeah, it's definitely storing dirt somewhere. I'll find it. All right, there we go, guys. So we're well on our way to quantum singularities, courtesy of the Emmy condenser. We've already got, you know, about a tenth of the way there almost. Sweet. Uh, plenty more to go, though. So hopefully my quarry will take care of lots of stuff. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind going to visit my quarry real quick and see how much progress it's made while I was uh, just pottering around in my AE network. This was supposed to be an eternal day age. Well, that didn't work out now, did it? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, yeah, look, it's cruising. Okay, good. Yeah, I definitely put 
zero length sun on this thing, but I guess I didn't have any luck with that progress. Oh well. I don't mind that much if it's a sun moving age. I'll live. Okay, guys, and with that, I'm sorry to say, I think we've hit the wrapping up point for the episode. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next episode, you know what I'm going to do in between this episode and next? I'm going to do this right now because I know I'm going to forget if I just don't do it. It's something I've been saying I need to do for a while here. I know not Digger 2. Back to Dyer's base, please. Cool. How are we for pipes? We've got 21 golden transport pipes here. Let's get some redstone. There we go. I'm going to replace the quartz pipes in the workshop. I probably need even more, to be honest with you. Oh, out of glass. How nice. All right. Well, I'm going to take care of this. And then um, next episode, I might get started working on my house. I might get started with a couple other bits of Ars Magica. I'm not quite sure where I'll go with it, but I'll definitely come up with some cool stuff to do. All right, guys. Like I said, hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.